unpleasant emotion caused by the nearness of danger or the expectation of pain. The thing that drives me is probably fear. Fear of failure, fear of not having enough time, fear of not being as good as people want me to be, fear of not making a mark. That's what usually drives me. Fear has kind of worked for me a little bit. And the times where I put the fear aside, my work usually suffers. Which is sad, but uh, it's true. When you look at the shots of Niagara Falls, you realize how beautiful it is, how awesome it is. Niagara Falls is one of the seven wonders of the world. It's never stopping, never ending. When you get there, and you see it, and you feel it, and you feel the force of the water, you can't anticipate something like that. You don't know what to expect. A lot of people um, made it a personal challenge to go over Niagara Falls and survive. And a lot of people died trying. I really wanted to, I guess, kick it up a notch. The first step was to be chained and strapped to a board. My hands were chained. My feet were locked down. My legs were locked down. And straps went across my chest. Then there was an actual box enclosure that locked over me with my hands sticking out and my feet sticking out. And to make it a little bit more interesting, we set the raft on fire. A little stupid, but we did it. Then the raft was dropped into the rushing water 500 feet before the edge of the falls. So I had 90 seconds to free myself from the board, from the box, from around the fire, and off the raft before the raft went over the edge of the falls. The night before the event, I was in my hotel room, uh, about to go to sleep, and I had this nightmare. I had this daydream nightmare that I died going over Niagara Falls. When you're confined, there's a moment that's really scary. And that's the moment before you test how much movement and how much daring you have. The unknown of how much leeway you have to exist. I don't like being confined. I don't like that. I don't like small elevators. I'm not claustrophobic, but I don't like not being able to, to breathe fully, you know? Remember, my hands are in view and my feet are in view the entire time. I'm fine. So there I was, chained to a board, box enclosure chained over me, hanging from this raft thing <laughs> with fire around the bottom. Remember, my hands are in view and my feet are in view the entire time. And the camera never cuts away, just one continuous shot from beginning to end. time that it hit like that with me inside and my head hit the top of the box which threw me off for a second attached to the raft we had a jet ski just in case i needed to make a last minute escape the funny thing is i'm really bad on jet skis when you're in a steel box going down the raft the sound is indescribable because not only is does the sound overwhelming but you're feeling the sound too i was getting very very nervous not good. I was panicking. If you look really closely, you can see my hands struggling and going into the box getting free. The 
can see me turn on my side and pull into the enclosure. been a lot of debate whether or not I went over the fall or whether I magically escaped before I went over the fall. And uh, I'm not telling. underneath the helicopter on a rope was this amazing feeling. I was totally soaking wet. Everybody looks at the results and thinks I'm dry. I guess I kind of look dry, but I'm not. I'm soaking wet. But the wind from the helicopter is kind of blowing all of the, the uh, excess water off me. And it was a great feeling. I tell you, at that moment, having the falls was rushing against me. It was just a, a view that you'd never, ever be able to see of Niagara Falls. Um, and uh, it's a great memory. Coming up next, water tank. And a big spike that would go crashing down on a timer if I took too long to get out. I don't care. 